this is the Provoke Prawn, here with a setup and wiring guide for an absolutely magnificent looking all-in-one cooler from Azus, and I'm going to talk you through all the things that you need to know about installing it in your case, setting up the screen and getting it working with relevant software, installing it with both AMD and Intel builds. So I'll give you both of the breakdowns on that. And I'll leave timestamps down below so you can jump to the relevant points in the video. I'm going to cover everything you need to know, including some little quirks of the design that I found along the way that made it a little tricky to install in the case and to get it set up. So stick with me to find out all about those. As you can see here, though, we've got everything laid out that you're going to need, including the two sets of brackets for Intel or AMD. Obviously, also, there are some other things here. The cooler comes with pre-applied thermal paste, so you're not going to need your own additional paste applied to the CPU. That's here ready. Just make sure you keep this plastic block in place, covering it and protecting it so it doesn't get damaged during the process because you want to make sure this is still set up nicely and ready to install. The other important thing to know is about the tubes, which I'll show you in a second, and how they work. And obviously we also have the fans already mounted to it. Now these are set up as exhaust fans so that the air will be blowing through the radiator and out of the top of the case. And this is obviously optimal for the design of this all-in-one cooler and how it's going to fit into your build. Now quickly I want to talk to you about the wiring logic of it and explain it because it's the same for both Intel and AMD. So we're going to break this down for you. You can see you've got two cables coming out of the fans and one cable coming out of the pump. That one, I think, logically will plug into the AIO pump header. And the ones come off the fans will go to CPU fan and the 5 volt RGB header. So you should find these in the top right hand side of your motherboard. You'll find them clearly marked up there. And you can see your manual if you need to to refer to where they are. But you should find these collected up at the top right. You might find a 5 volt RGB header down the bottom as well, additionally. Later on in the video, I'll show you how to pop in the screen as well, but it basically just slots in place over here once you've installed everything else. And then there's a USB cable, which will then run to the bottom middle of your motherboard and plug into a spare USB port that you might have down there. You can see this motherboard's got two of those, and you can only plug this cable in one way because of the way the connectors and the pins work in that socket. Another important thing to know about this cooler is the way the tubes work. You can see on the radiator that you can turn and twist them and you can do this in either direction so they can be adjusted. You can also do this on the pump block, the bit that sits down over the CPU. And this is important because you need to be able to adjust these depending on the design of your case. When I went to install them in this Corsair case that I'm building with, the Frame 4000D, I found that the tubes were getting in the way and making it difficult. So you have to offset them, basically curving them round to the right and then curving them back again, which meant adjusting them both on the radiator and on the pump end as well, and tweaking that so that it could then fit. This is one takeaway that I thought might be useful, because you'll find you need to adjust them potentially when installing them in your build. Now I'm going to show you the setup process for AMD, and then I'll show you Intel. So we're going to start with AMD AM5 installation, and I'll leave timestamps so you can jump forward if you need to. But with this, you basically have to remove the standard standoffs and clips that are above and below the motherboard and replace them with these ones that are included in the box. You'll notice it's got CPU written on it and then an arrow pointing in the direction. So you line them up like that. Then reuse the screws that we just removed from the standard AM5 standoffs and insert them into these new clips instead. So the bracketing here, we're going to put those back into there and then screw it back in. So this takes the place of the standard setup because the cooler is basically just going to sit down over the top of this. This is a really easy installation for AMD because all you have to do is once everything's in the case, take that plastic cover off, seat it down over the top and then screw it into the place with a screwdriver, tightening all four corners up nicely as you can see me doing here. So that would be the standard setup for AM5 socket motherboards, and it's really easy to do. Now we go on to uh, Intel setup. So this is an LGA 1851 socket motherboard, but the same logic would work with an LGA 1700 socket. And those are the two sockets of motherboard that this cool will work with. Once you've got your CPU installed into the socket, you're then going to go about installing a backplate and some additional parts. So this backplate has some little covers on it. Remove those so the sticky tape is exposed because this is going to go on the back of the motherboard. 
and push through to the front and that sticky tape will then ensure that it's secured nicely to the rear. Now you can do this before you install the motherboard in the case and that's probably easiest unless you've got an area that you can access like this in the frame 4000D where you can see I can reach through and basically insert that quite easily. You then need these plastic clips to then seat down on the other side. And they sit down over the standoffs that we've just pushed through with that bracket going around the four corners of the CPU. Then going about the installation of the radiator. Now I would recommend, depending on the size of your case, that you try and plug in the cables beforehand. So the wiring logic I showed you earlier on, you can see there won't be much space behind the rad once it's installed. So just plug those cables in. Then seat the radiator into the top and what we're going to do here is then secure the radiators to the top of the case. So you're going to need the little tiny radiator screws, which you'll find included in this little pouch here. So inside here is a whole load of little screws. Now this point is interesting with the radiator design here because it's different from a lot of other rads I've seen. We actually have multiple screw holes. So you'll see at the top in this case, what I had to do was adjust the InfiniRail system which is essentially Corsair's own system for radiator and fan bracket mounting, to put this into a position where it would fit with 140 millimeter fans. So you see you have two lots of screw holes here. I'm using the 140 millimeter screw holes to secure the radiator here. You might choose to use the smaller ones, which is like the 120 millimeter setup instead. Pretty interesting design there. But basically make sure that's secured, remove the plastic cover from the CPU block so the thermal paste is exposed. And then as I said, maneuver those tubes around so you can then seat this down over the top of the CPU. We then want to secure the four screws using a screwdriver. Make sure they're tightened up as much as possible without forcing it, but you need to secure all four so they don't tighten anymore. So it's nicely secured there. You can see that you can move the bracket out of the way left and right so that you can easily get a screwdriver into those holes and adjust that too. Then you need to go and plug in those cables. And as you can see at this point, it's pretty fiddly to get your hand behind there, which is why I said to do it beforehand, plugging in the small cable coming from this to the AIO pump header, for example, I found quite fiddly to do, which is why I'd recommend doing it earlier, as I showed before. And then obviously the fans go to the CPU fan header and then a 5R RGB connection for the RGB lighting for the fans as well. So plugging those all in when possible and when it's easiest. With all of that secured, you can then put the display into place. So it just slots in quite easily and notches into the bracketing there. But then you obviously have the USB cable that you need to run to the bottom. I'd recommend try and run it up, hide it behind the tubes and up there so it can't be seen. Nestle that away, run it around through the back and then down towards the bottom of the motherboard so you can plug it in. This is obviously essential though because otherwise the display won't work and you won't be able to see the readouts on the screen. So running it through Velcro ties or clips around the edge there so you can run it down to the bottom and plug it in in the middle as I showed before and a little bit fiddly if you've got a tight case to build in, but then you can set it up. And once it's done, you can see with it powered on, everything's working. So we've got the RGB lighting on the fans and the display's working nicely too. Don't forget to peel that protective film off of it and you'll find that it's working now. But in order to get the screen to show what we want to, we have to download some software. So you need to head over to the website for it, go to the support page, and then you want to go to the driver and tool section. Here we're looking to download the ASUS InfoHub software for this cooler. Now this is specific and it's different from Armour Crate, which we might also need. I'll get to that in a second. But the InfoHub software allows you to adjust the screen and see other settings for it. So once you've downloaded that, you can see that there are several different display backgrounds that you can choose from on the bottom left and you can apply those. It's important to click apply once you've done what you want to, to send it to the screen. And then you can choose from a variety of different readouts. You can see CPU and GPU, temperature, fan speed, voltage, frequency, usage, and things like that. So you can just drag those into the relevant spots that you can see grayed out on the display and put them in there. And then again, once you're happy with it, you just click apply on that and then it will put it onto the screen so you can easily see it at a glance. So you can adjust through these quite easily and you can delete them as well. So once you put it on there, you can change it. It's also worth noting there's a brightness display on the left hand side there, which you also might want to adjust so that you can then see it 
fully bright. And you'll see this goes onto the screen in that curved way. Now, if you want to use GIFs or videos instead, you can do that too. With Giphy, if you just head over there, for example, find a GIF that you like, download it, then media library, the bottom left, you can click add and you can get the crop ratio set up so you've got it the way you want to. That will load onto there, then you just click apply and you can do that. You can also set it so it cycles through a variety of these. So there's a setting in the hub where you can just basically click on it to cycle through a number of different ones that you've chosen. But if you want to control the RGB lighting of the fans, you're going to need separate software. Depending on your motherboard, it depends on what you're going to use. If you're using an Asus motherboard as I am, you'll use Armory Crate, but you might use MSI's Mystic Light software or something like Signal RGB to control the RGB lighting of the fans. But that does mean you're going to need two separate softwares in order to control this cooler. Hopefully this has been some helpful info for you. Check out the links in the description to find out more, including a review of the cooler that you might find helpful as well. This has been the Provoke Brawn. Thanks for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.